welcome back to the Spirit of Watercolor with Linda. And I just thought we would maybe just have a little inspirational talk uh, about watercolor. Um, I like to do this from time to time uh, because it is such a spiritual medium, as I always say, thus the name of my, my, uh, my channel, the Spirit of Watercolor. And welcome, I'm glad you're here. Um, and I just wanted to talk a little bit about a little more about the ways that this connects us to nature, this medium of not only, like I said, it's water, pigment from the earth that's used to make the paints, right? But, you know, I was just painting with the, uh, the book, Zoltan Zabel's book about 70 favorite watercolor techniques. And I realized when I was doing that, that I've been very drawn, especially the last few years when I was kind of cooped up with the pandemic, like many of us inside that, painting landscapes and seascapes was mainly what I was doing and um, you know just those little even the little sketches some days with just with the colors I wanted to play with and then I go outside and look at nature and see the beauty out around me I feel like uh, painting things from nature really does bring us uh, a connection to you know spiritual part of our lives so much and so you know I used to paint all kinds of subjects like many people you know landscape wasn't the only thing I of course I did I've always done flowers and it's another beautiful way which also you get to learn with um, flowers just smaller simpler shapes that you can do loose and free with the watercolor they work well for learning how to use the techniques, but the, the, the loose ones, the wet and wet ones. But also then you can get in those little details in the middle of the flowers, the little stamens and pistils and things like that, right? Um, and you, you know, just practicing your small brushes with the grasses around or the leaves. So they, you know, the connection is so strong. And, you know, I was kind of struggling the other day, like I need to say something really super important with my with my watercolors, I'll make a grand statement. And I, I was painting one, and I have to finish it as a, you know, a woman and a man, and he's white and she's black. And, you know, just to make, you know, that, you know, for myself as well as everyone else, you know, a lot of people were doing Black Lives Matter uh, work, artwork, and posting it up in galleries. And that was wonderful. And, you know, I, I wasn't really willing at that time to take my work out, out, because I was staying indoors a lot, because I work with seniors. So, but, you know, I, um, I found that, you know, the great comfort and the spiritual connection for me right now, and maybe that's where I'm headed, and maybe it'll shift because we do evolve and change over time. You can have many subject matters, right? But, I mean, right now nature just seems to really be the thing that I enjoy, and it's okay. I just, I guess I'm trying to say, paint whatever that you want to paint, okay? Paint what you love right now. It may change and that's okay. Or you, you know, I was doing birds for a while with some of my friends who do them wonderfully and I was not used to that. I'm starting now after, you know, kind of struggling and had unfinished paintings and, you know, didn't know what I was doing or didn't feel comfortable. I'm now getting more comfortable with, with doing birds. Um, and I look back across the wall here and I, I did some seashells, which I'd love to do again, take you to the beach on the shore, uh, things like that. Just, you know, I want to say, find things that bring you joy in, in the world. And if it is a subject, okay, that's totally wonderful. Um, and of course, you know, people I know were painting, I saw in the news during the pandemic, they were painting you know, the icebergs because they were, and someone was painting about fires because of the, you know, fires that have been going on, and you know, to draw attention to climate change, to make a statement with their work. That is one thing that you can do that's totally valid and a very admirable thing to do. And I am still considering that even though I keep coming back into it, especially while I'm teaching on the computer or on the channel here, YouTube channel. I want to teach the uh, the landscape and the florals and the non-representational, you know, flowing things to teach technique. And that's, you know, for me, the way to do it. If you're starting to get into the anatomy and drawing and all those things, you know, separate those, you know, don't try to do it all at once. That's just my thoughts, my tip for the day, okay? Because, you know, each medium is a challenge in itself. Each subject 
has different challenges too. So that was just my thoughts today as I sat here thinking I'm going to go to work in a few minutes and help a client um, that's a lovely person. And I'm going to, uh, you know, sit here and ponder this myself a little, meditate on what I want to do next. And, um, and also just say, you know, feel good about what you want to do. Don't worry about what other people might, you know, be doing, you know, or painting and that maybe you can't do that as well. Okay. Uh, find some of your strengths too. Okay. If you're good at the defi de defined work, you know, um, and you like that, or you like colored pencils because they're much more controllable, do that for a while, but just take some time to allow yourself to play in another medium, right? Because these other mediums uh, may, uh, you know, it may take you time, but you may get where you understand them too, and you can also add that into your repertoire of mediums that you might like to use. Anyway, I'm just, I'm just so thankful today to have um, watercolor in my life. It's my favorite medium, uh, one I'll probably never stray too far from. I do do a little colored pencil, and I'm not actually too bad at it. I was kind of surprised, but um, it just feels so con so controlled to me. And I like I like the freedom that the watercolor gives me. Like the flowing of the water seems to, you know, kind of uh, give me uh, um, a connection where I'm not all in control. And I, I think that that for me. You know is the joy you know is the watercolors kind of want to do their own thing each paint has its own way with the um, sedimentation in some uh, the transparency of others the um, translucency of other I mean they all have their own little personalities and I like to see what they do because they they're gonna do what they're gonna do <laughs> just like some people I know <laughs> including myself. <laughs> anyway, this is what I wanted to just talk about today. So enjoy what you're doing, do what you want to do with your art, and um, I hope you'll keep coming back and playing with the watercolors uh, along with me and learning and growing in this most beautiful medium. And uh, let me know what else you do, what other mediums you like, and um, I would love to know. Thanks so much for joining me today. Please like and subscribe as we move now into taking those palette knives that I talked about. And we're going to, like I said, we're going to make rocks with watercolor. And it's going to be very interesting. And then from there we'll move on to charging a wash, to another video that is, and then to um, backwashes, which are, are, me, are uh, techniques that I think are just amazing in themselves too. So we'll, we'll look at those soon. Okay, see you on the next video. Have a most wonderful and blessed day. Thank you.